Luckily, it's not my first time patching rust on the floor. Yeah. Done multiple derby cars. We can do derby car style rust repair. It's that time of day again. Where we at? Oh, I couldn't hear you. I had earplugs in my hat. So we have to get to work. We have to take our life serious and we have to actually do something. So we made a hillbilly come to work today. You can see just how happy he is to be at work today. <laughs> We're getting to work on the lamo. We're getting serious. That roof is going to put itself. Actually, no, it's not. It's not. We're going to put the roof on, but we were hoping that the roof would put itself on, but it won't. So we're going to put it on and we're going to show you just how we're going to do that right now. Don't ask me what I'm doing because I don't quite know yet. I thought you were going to. I was going to strap it, but I could just use the lift. So I am trying to figure out where to do my sections and using them as reference points. Guess what? Hillbilly went to Napa to get an oil filter for Frank. You guys may not remember Frank, but Frank's our forklift. We got a brand new engine for Frank. So Hillbilly got that all put together and he's gonna show you guys that stuff here in a minute when he gets back. <laughs> All right, so I just kind of rough cut that off. Obviously, you can see that it's the outside that matters because the outside is what we're actually sectioning. What I'm trying to do right now is get everything cut away so that we can section it back into the limo itself. I'm gonna grind right there and then I'm gonna get my belt file and belt file these spot welds right here and right here so that that's cleaned up nicely. We're gonna try out this new band file. You know what's funny? Well, what's cool is you used to couldn't get this band file. They just came out with it, but guys were taking and they were making their own out of, I think a Harbor Freight piece and then a Milwaukee grinder and Milwaukee listened and they built a Milwaukee one. I cut through here and then I precisely used my air file. So now that I'm through on that, Got my handy dandy new band file. Once we get through that, we use our seam buster and we break the seams like that and like that. So now what we've got, we've got our inner brace, our outer skin and our inner reinforcement. So we're gonna actually just butt weld these. We're doing overlapping joints so that we don't have any structural integrity loss. So we'll have a butt weld here, a butt weld here. We'll put a plate behind that. But that right there is roughly what we're going for. So that's the B pillar cut on here. I'm gonna hurry and finish up the other side. And then we've got to figure out where to trim the back. Oh, we got a lot of stuff. I'm sure the limo company did it simply and they went through holes. I always, I always look for landmarks. Basically like there's a crease there, there's a hole there and kind of gauge everything off of that. But we'll figure it out once we look at the actual car. So we won't cut that until last. Just in the process of putting Frank's motor all back together, got it all assembled for the most part yesterday. All I got left now is this hose, the oil filter, bell housing, clutch, pressure plate, and then it can get dropped into Frank and hopefully start and run. Wasn't able to find no specs or anything online to figure out what the timing is. So I'm hoping that I have it set at number one cylinder and hopefully that's what it calls for. So we'll find out when we put it back in. All right, so we are in the operating room. We got our patient on the table. And we got to make some cuts. I got to clean. So this is the antiseptic crap. I don't know what it is. I ain't done. It's going to clean it all up real nice. I'm going to be sectioning this outer piece right here. And then we got to cut the pillar somewhere up in here. So we can section that. But what I want to do is cut this away and actually just remove it all the way out. Then we'll make our cut in there. And that's that. It'll all make sense later, I promise you. Just taking the clutch fork out so I can um, dry up the bearings and get the old grease out and put new grease tanks. So I want to get that all fixed up. What part of the operation is this? All right, so now we just removed the um, upper extremities. I believe that's what these are. Um, we're just gonna take my scalpel and just beat it through it. 
you can really see what mess we've made. We got some glue and all sorts of stuff holding this together. That's no match for my seam buster. So we're just kind of doing this one quick and dirty. Just need to get it off and out of the way. I didn't actually need to do that. I just realized. Because there's this panel encapsulated in there. I'm trying to get the underside panel. I'm going to hurry and spot weld drill all this. That's way quicker. Oh, yeah. The only thing is I've got to cut the bottom side, so I'm going to hurry and find all those real quick. So I've got to be careful the drill bit didn't cut them all the way. I'm going to try to not tear it. But I am welding it back together, so it'll be okay. I just got to break those welds real quick. Look at that. When you precisely cut something, it literally just launched to jump off. Now, I've got to very, 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 very cautiously cut that. This calls for some safety galoshes. All right, now I've got it. I've got in. I have made access. Where's my saw? I have made access to the inner bone structure. I will now insert my saw. <laughs> Trying to take extra caution because this panel is going back in. Voila! So now you can see. He kind of bombed it. Yeah. This little panel will get reused. So now we've accessed in here. We know that this panel is going to stay because we're going to put our other panel here. Now let's go out and look. All right. So I've got a hole here and I've got a hole up in here. So if I go one cell phone length down from that hole. That'd be good. Let's go check that because then we're above the dash. We can use a welding blanket, cover the dash. We don't have to get into the dash. We're out of the rusted area. We'll take the doors off. We'll section this out, put that panel back in. All's going to be great. All right, so one cell phone length. We're going to go down just a little bit more because that's not on the other side. It's not too much to cover. <laughs> Wow. All right, so these lower A pillars are cut off. So now I cut all this stuff long because when we go to put it on the limo, I'll measure it, we'll cut it, we'll weld it, we'll put the outer sleeve on, weld that up, and we'll have some structural integrity. Now I'm not getting super crazy with this going to joints because we are gonna cage this car. And so this will have some uprights right here have a bar that goes across the windshield. There'll be a lot of added protection that Lamo Land Yacht didn't come with from the factory. There's an inner brace in here, so I'm gonna make my section higher on the outside to bypass the brace. I'm gonna get this all cut out, but as soon as I make these two cuts, then I've gotta figure out my cut on the roof panel. We're gonna slice that and then bring the car in and start getting that all prepared. All right, so I've got this all cut out. Now it's time to go to the limo, make our last cut. Since that is all rotted, we're probably gonna end up cutting it back into here somewhere. We're gonna have to go at least 10 inches on that. Yeah, we'll go 10 inches. So we're 10 inches, we'll just slice and dice that. And then this side was four inches, so we'll go five. All right, I'm gonna figure out how to cut that, slice it and dice it. This is a rough cut, kind of where it needs to be. Now the limb was coming in here. We're going to do some more dissecting and cutting and figuring. I think we're going to end up cutting the roof skin back a little bit, extending these out so we can miss the rust. Hey, Robbie, I need my ground man. All right. We're gonna get the doors pulled off. So we need to get the wiring out. We'll drop the doors and then we'll start fitting that roof panel up. 
Okay, so me and Robbie's been working on getting the doors off. Got the wiring all gutted out of it, which is a big rat's nest wiring. I got three of the four bolts pulled, so I have one bolt left, and this door should just fall off. Just like that. The reason we're pulling these doors is we're changing these eight pillars down into here. And if you open the door, it's just in the way. This Lincoln Town car does not have plugs on their wiring harness. So we had to literally pull the entire harness out. This is part of the main body harness. So we unplugged everything, disassembled it, pulled the speaker out, got this door discombobulated. Anyway, and luckily one, the passenger door has less wiring than the other side. So we only have one door that had bad wiring yeah. getting out. The nice thing is, is we've got it half stripped down so that when we paint it, all we gotta do is pull the mirror, the handle and the window trim, killing two birds with one stone. But you can see right here, this is what we're trying to eliminate is all this junk right here. We're gonna be cutting this all out, ditching the rust, doing our panel. Oh, look at that, it's cracking. Good thing we're changing it. I'm gonna get working on this panel. Hillbilly's gonna get working on the other side. We're gonna trim this up. We've got a lot of trimming to do, but we're just about done for the day because I gotta go to my nephew's birthday party, but we will be back tomorrow to finish working on this roof panel. We got a lot of work. To section this roof, it's not an easy task, but we're up for it and we're gonna get it done. All the old A-pillars right here. And also this is our second roof panel on camera. That's true. We did mats and the banana. The banana wasn't as in depth as this one, but it was still in depth. Pretty dang in depth. Okay, Robbie got most of his side done. Still a little bit more to do before he had to leave for his nephew's birthday party. So I'll show you his side. My side, I got most of the rivets ground. All these are ground. This big group's ground. There's the line I have to cut on. And then I got to do a bunch up this. Okay, I got all those spots grinded for the most part. Got a couple more up top, but I'll wait until Robbie gets here because he didn't go up that far. So I'll show you guys that. Then I'll cut the line and show you pilling it. Let's see what this is gonna do for me. Finally, got it off. Looking pretty good. There's the piece that we I just took off. So now we'll just wait for Robbie to get back, which will be tomorrow. We'll finish his side. It is the next day. We're gonna try to get this roof all trimmed up, get it fit on the Lamo, and maybe weld it. Robbie's already tried the new Milwaukee vacuum out. He says it's really good. So it's my turn to try it out and we'll see that how good it is. So far, it sounds like it's gonna suck the car through it. it has that much sucking pr uh, pressure. Check this thing out. This is like a carpet cleaner. Freaking awesome. Look at that. Oh wait, you need, you need air. <laughs> Wow. I can use it in my house. That is awesome. Cody, check this out. This can take so many of them. So Hillbilly's gone to the other side. That new vacuum is freaking awesome. I got a little jealous, so I had to run it a little. But we got Cody here helping, and same with Steve. Cody's gonna work on the other side on some stuff. All right, that's where we're gonna pre-cut it. It's all gonna make sense here in a little bit. When we start putting this back together and putting our windows back on and welding things up, you're gonna see a lot of structure come back to these. <laughs> Just gotta wait for Hillbilly to finish up cleaning up all the rust and whatever else fell off the roof. We can take off the outer skin on the pillar to where Robbie's got it. Uh, trimmed out and ready to go on the roof we're putting on. So we'll cut this off, leave the inner, put it in there, sleeve it, and start welding. Hey, Robbie, have you seen the floor brace? Is it rotten? What's left of it? What floor brace. <laughs> Luckily, it's not my first time patching rust on the floor. Yeah. Done multiple derby cars. We can do derby car style rust repair. This vacuum works amazingly. The nice thing about a seam buster, it breaks through seams. There's almost no structure when you cut the roofs off. 
It takes every component tied together to actually give strength to all this stuff. <laughs> All right, we're just getting all my spot welds all ground up. I'm gonna get working on this roof now, trying to gain some access to this inner structure. Taking little pieces off so I can get to this structure right here because we're gonna butt weld this to the other one. And we're gonna take a window out of the other and then we're gonna patch the windows back in. So all of this is gonna get re-welded back in. Just got this side rough cut. We're gonna for sure take this roof panel back behind this brace. So I think what I'm gonna work on now is just kind of trimming it back a little, getting it into there. We'll get both sides exposed. That side's rusty as heck. So we for sure have to cut it back. Yeah, because right here is where it was rotted, buckling on the driver's side, back behind the pillars. So we're gonna cut the skin back, open it up behind the brace like Robbie's doing on the opposite side and see what we're facing and how far we gotta go back with this and section in from the donut tower. All right, just gaining access, like I already said. I'm gonna try to cut this as straight as possible. So this is gonna just be a rough cut, rough measurement, roughly nine inches back. Yeah, I'm gonna come across here. How straight is that? Probably not very straight. I'm just gonna follow this line across. Once I get over here, um, we'll cut it to where Cody can dissect that side. Then we gotta measure up that roof panel and make all these things match and become very, very happy with each other. Well, this is just, we're gonna use this for filler panels, but you can see why we cut it back. It's not as bad as I thought, so we may not, well, we got rust down into here. So we're gonna trim this out. I wanna try to avoid going past that. What we'll probably do, Cody, why don't we just patch the rust? So we'll trim it back to about right here. And then patch out And here. then I think we're just gonna patch the rust. And we're gonna do a unnecessary overlap joint on the roof, rather than butt weld. We're just gonna overlap it. This thing's a rock crawler. So nobody's gonna look up on a roof and critique us. Robbie just got done hacking out the roof. So we gotta dissect this a little bit. Uh, it looks like we're gonna have to at least do a patch panel back here in the middle of the bow for this rot here. And after we get that out, we'll access the situation on the inside and see what we've gotta do there to where we can get on the back side and see how bad the rust is. But by the looks of it so far, we're only gonna have to go back about the same as right here on the inside. <laughs> Now that we got those couple pieces off, we can see where this is at back here. So we'll probably come right back here and hack this outside off. Get this off so we can access the inside and see what damage we've got in there. Okay, we got everything dissected in from the outside, the rusted pieces, you know, obviously that's gonna come off what's left there. We've gotta take so much off on the inside. We got a little bit of bubble rust right here. We'll just buzz over with the belt grinder real quick. See if it's just surface rust. If it's just surface rust, we'll be able to section it up here without trying to, you know, try to stay out of the roof bow, but we will uh, grind it out and see what we gotta do. We're gonna repair this the way it should have been built. Real good. However that is. And that was a terrible, terrible weld. No wonder it rotted out. Anyway, Cody's got this all cut back. Uh, we're just getting a game plan. He's gonna cut right here past the rust. We're almost matching. Almost. Jeez, these are our fire resistant flannels. I'm gonna start cutting over on my roof. Um, I'm just gonna make a big window right here on my roof panel to where we can access this. And then, like I said, we'll just patch it all back in. Once we cage this sucker, we're putting side panels back on it, putting all new interior. This car, it's gonna look mint. Then we're gonna paint it. We're gonna put disco lights and a disco ball. I'm gonna use my seam buster to actually break through this because I can't get my air saw in deep enough and I, I don't wanna die grind it because it'll just destroy it. Okay, Hillbilly's here for moral support. He's holding down the fork. Gotta hold down the roof. That sucker was glued. Looks like we we'll to do some flattening. Yeah, a little bit. We definitely want to get all this glue out so that when we weld, it doesn't burn. So this is giving me access to where I need to be. That's a little 
you diddly screwed up, but that's okay. I'm gonna go through this off. This side is the side that Cody's gonna use to section. So we're gonna use this piece. We'll need to drill through it. So I went and got Cody's bro to broach. I struggle with the spot weld drill, especially on these gutters. So I actually think these might be laser welds or something. They're not, they're not normal. Just drilling just enough. I think they are laser, honestly. All right, that made it a lot easier. I think we've determined that these were laser welds because they were not round. I'm gonna clear this up and we're gonna make some rough cut measurements and try to figure out where to put all this. Okay, Cody's gonna section this outer piece off and then we've got this to the point where we can fit it up, cut it, trim it, make it fit. Getting all the parts prepped by cleaning all the paint off of it so that way when it comes time to actually put it welding it in place, it's that part's done and we can just weld it. Yeah, not a fan of these welds. Not at all. But we got this piece off. Now we get up there, measure back where we need to cut this so we can uh, do a seam and weld that on the car. Then we'll put this back on and put the pieces back on the layers we took them off and get it put back together. Just finishing up the, cleaning these up to where they're ready to install and be welded on. All right, we got the driver's side done. Now we're gonna pull off this cap on the outer side. There's no rust damage on this. We're doing it for the sectioning of the roof so we can stagger the joints for stability. Then I think we're ready to set the roof on. We'll come through here, clean up the a little bit of the weld that's still left on there. So we got us a flat surface to mate to to weld the other piece back on. You would never even believe it, but we finally have all our windows cut and everything ready so that we can put this up here, trim some stuff up, do some sections, and weld the roof panel on. This is actually sort of the way that iCar would explain it. If you don't know what iCar is, that means you're not in the collision industry, but it's a certification program that is based around the collision industry. So we are iCar certified. Me and Big Dog over there. You probably wouldn't section a roof like this in real life, but on the Lamo, it's what we're doing. You got it. Don't drop it. So we're just gonna, Cody, I'm gonna, yeah, let's go on the outside of this. This for this part, why don't we chop the roof? All right, so we've made, we're gonna make some more rough cuts, cut some more stuff out. We're gonna cut these pillars off. So you can see these holes. I'm gonna cut the bottom of this hole straight across, and then we can try to overlap and do some cutting. So basically the pillars, we're probably just gonna have to cut and fit and cut and fit and cut and fit. So we've just about got it where it needs to be but we think that the car is doing this. So we're gonna get some jacks and we're gonna jack up right here so it relieves the pressure on the front end and kinda allows us to do what we need to do with this opening. We've got the roof fit. It took a little bit to get it all vice gripped up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the grinder or the cutoff and I'm gonna go cut through everything so that everything's got a good tight butt match. So the front, the pillar up here, I just got to trim it a little bit. Cody's side has a little bit of a gap, so we're putting some backers in. I cut it short, just so you guys are aware. But we're gonna fill that. I've got to cut through on the top rails on both sides, and then cut through on the B pillar on both sides. We'll pull it off, we'll grind everything up, we'll put it back on. Actually, we're gonna, before we pull it off, we're gonna fit the windshield. Then we're gonna pull it off, then we're gonna grind everything, then we're gonna tack it in place, and then that's it for the night because we're tired. The roof is gonna be an animal in and of itself, trying to get that all patched together, but it's gonna be great. And then we're gonna be building a cage that kind of hugs stuff. So that's gonna be cool, but I'm thinking of keeping the cage sort of inboard to where all the interior can still go back in. We'll probably have it follow right here and drop down somewhere in this neighborhood. And it's gonna go straight down and connect to the frame. The frame is right here. So we're gonna be cutting some holes, putting some plates, welding our bars, doing those types of things. 
We might do the mat trick. Matt uses two by two square tubing and then puts his DOM into the inside of it, his inch and three quarter, and it fits. And then he welds it up. So we might be doing that. Everything's fitting pretty well. So we're gonna butt weld them back together. All right, we're getting the windshield. We're gonna test fit it. To make sure we still have a big enough opening. Yeah, then the tag's lined up now. See, there's no gap there anymore. Oh yeah, look at that. That almost looks like you can put a bead of urethane in it and make it work. And look, <coughs> it's hitting the exact same spot. We're tight. We we're setting flush over here. It is just a little bit bigger gap on this side. So maybe we got to suck the roof down and close up our gap over here is the issue. Oh yeah, let's grab a ratchet strap and let's suck that pillar together. So this is exactly why you want to test fit things for this right here. So this side, we thought it was in the right spot. We got a little bit of a gap right here, but we also have too big of a gap up top. So see that, that needs to be like right up there. Now, if you want it to be, if you want it to be a shysty, you could leave that. Just adjust your windshield up, look at this. Nobody would ever know. But that's not the way we do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a ratchet strap. And we're gonna suck this whole panel down to it. So we'll grab it. I'll show you how to do it here in just a second. Watch this gap get tighter. Here you go. 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 I think we're good. We're, um, we're even across the windshield, are aren't we? we? Well, let's go one more click for good luck. So I'm gonna tighten this up. Yes. Now we're like really good. We're still gonna use our backers, but look at that. We're tight down here. Got a baby gap there. We've got a nice precision line there. We're gonna pull this windshield back out, hurry and make my cuts, pull it off, grind it, do everything I already said. Ooh! Whoa. There's pressure on that. There's pressure on that. Lift up. Billy used his that he put his back into it. Well, that had some pressure. Did I dare use that? Yeah. They All don't right. hurt. I've seen them explode. I've had them explode. Got it! Now that it's cut, we're gonna remove all the vice grips, pull this off, get it all ground up, get it ready to weld in place permanently. We decided to overlap this and weld it for a little bit of added strength um, because it's not gonna matter up there. This matters and so does this. This is our door opening. So we worked all day long. Now we're gonna finally put the roof panel on. So Cody's here helping out. Well, I'm gonna run to the other side and get this all clamped up. They're gonna set it in place. So you wanna make sure and line everything up perfectly. That's gonna make your weld a heck of a lot better. So we got the B pillar all fit, got the A pillar in. Now we're gonna put the windshield on, make sure everything's square in case we need to make any adjustments. Looks like it's fitting pretty good. So we'll hand this back over to Steve. He'll put it on the shelf and we're gonna get this thing welded. Weldy weld. So you always wanna make sure and put a spark blanket in so that nothing touches the interior. Otherwise, you're gonna burn stuff. And that's just not good. Don't really know what Hillbilly said because we lost audio. But he was probably explaining that I'm gonna overlap weld this right now. See that little jack thing? That's called a monkey on a stick. That's holding the roof line together and holding it up in place while I weld all of the stuff that I need to get welded. So we got that all done. Release the monkey on a stick. Look at my work. Take this ratchet strap off and admire how well this roof panel came out. Look at those welds. We're not quite done, but we do have the structure welded in, so. So after the entire weekend, we finally got this roof panel on. To all you people that say that we never get a project done, we finally did it. As always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one. That's all, folks.